This course is on protective device coordination analysis. Some people call this coordination studies, protection studies. A lot of different terms get used for this, but what it really comes down to is when you have overcurrent devices, you're trying to predict the order in which they trip. And you might think the order in which they trip, yeah, if you um, have a, a short circuit somewhere and the current's coming from the source going down to the last device, the order that they should trip is the device closest to the fault, closest to the short circuit, should be the only device to trip. And that way you leave as much of the system energized as possible. You minimize the extent of an outage. This course, we have the introduction. I'm going to talk about some of the basic coordination principles. Then I want to introduce what are known as time current curves. From there, we'll look at the data requirements. There's a tremendous amount of data that goes into performing a short circuit study. Then we'll look at the specifics of the overcurrent protective devices, including molded case circuit breakers, both adjustable and non-adjustable. We'll look at fuses and how to coordinate fuses, specifically how to coordinate current limiting fuses. And then we're gonna look at static trip or electronic trip circuit breakers that have what's known as a long time, short time, instantaneous and ground function. And we'll also look at ground fault protection separate from the LSIG electronic or solid state breakers. We're also going to take a look at overcurrent relays. And with overcurrent relays, they have functions such as the amp tap, time dial, and the instantaneous. We're going to see what these functions are all about. And we're going to see how to set these devices, how to determine an amp tap, a time dial, and an instantaneous setting. We're going to look at current transformers and the current transformer ratio, which is part of the relay scheme, as well as how the relays operate. We'll look at time margins with relays. There's a certain time margin, a separation that you need in the time that the relays take to respond. We'll look at something known as shifting curves for different voltages. This one is kind of an interesting perspective. Because what happens, and I'm, I'm not going to go into this yet, but what happens when you have overcurrent devices that are at two different voltages, they're seeing two different currents, it's a little more complex to try to evaluate which one would trip first. You might think, what are you talking about? Transformers. When you have a primary device on a transformer and a secondary device on a transformer, they're seeing two different currents, the primary and the secondary current. And when you're evaluating the time current characteristics, it's a little more complicated because you can't just look at the, the two characteristics and compare them directly with each other because they're seeing two different currents. And I'm going to show you how to address that. It's called shifting the curves. And it's something that I sometimes will refer to as the apparent coordination. And we're going to take a look at that as we dig a little deeper too. We're going to go into some pretty, pretty deep areas with coordination. So we'll look at what I refer to as apparent coordination and shifting curves this happens regularly when you're comparing a transformer's primary and secondary devices we're also going to look at protecting transformers with overcurrent devices in another course i mentioned how the national electrical code has their criteria it's table 450.3a and b and that table we will see it here really just gives you what I refer to as a backstop for protection because the NEC, my opinion, doesn't really give you good guidance for protecting transformers. And we'll see why I make that statement. The preferred method, the better method for protecting transformers is to use what's known as an ANSI through fault curve. And I'm gonna show you how to use this. We have some examples that we'll see as we progress through this course. There's also an issue when you're protecting a transformer that the transformer winding connections can create. For example, if you have a delta Y grounded transformer and you're gonna protect a transformer with the ANSI through fault curves, there are some special considerations that you need to make or you'll find that a transformer that you thought was protected really is not protected. We're gonna take a look at motor time current curves and use that to evaluate the motor starting characteristics and the protection for motors. 
And then finally, there is a case problem where we're going to coordinate multiple devices in a given circuit. In fact, throughout this course, there are going to be quite a few problems. We're going to take a look at how do you coordinate an adjustable circuit breaker with that 70 amp breaker. So the, the graph that you just drew of the 70 amp circuit breaker, keep that nearby because we're going to add to it. And we're going to take a look at a K-frame 225 amp circuit breaker. This is going to be an adjustable circuit breaker. In your handouts, you have a K-frame adjustable circuit breaker. And what this time current characteristic looks like, this time current characteristic, it's this one right here. And so you can see there are several bands. So there is what is called the low setting. That's the dark band on the left. There's the high setting. That's the green crosshatched band on the right. And there's actually a middle or a medium setting. And that is the little yellow truncated part in the middle. What these bands are representing, each one of these bands are representing where this circuit breaker transitions from overload to instantaneous. So it's defining the magnitude of current where the instantaneous is triggered. That if the current goes above this vertical band, that's where the device trips instantaneously. And you might think, is that, is that important? It is. And that's what this next example is going to illustrate. It's going to illustrate the importance of having that adjustment. And it's also going to illustrate how do you determine how to adjust it. When you have multiple settings, like this device, you can set it low, medium, or high. How do you know which way to adjust it? When we look at protecting the transformer, there are many things that need to be considered. One of these issues is known as transformer magnetizing inrush current. So when we come up with protection on the primary side, whether that's with relays and a circuit breaker or fuses, we don't want to select or set the device too large because the transformer may not be suitably protected. We also don't want to select or set the device too small because when you energize a transformer, there's a large magnetizing inrush current. And that magnetizing inrush current can be anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 times the transformer's primary full load current. And if you select the device too small or make it too responsive, it may nuisance trip because of the inrush current. We're gonna use this problem to illustrate how do you properly protect transformers. We're also gonna use this problem to illustrate how protective relays operate. There's quite a bit that we're gonna be getting into in this next segment. So this example, I'm gonna use this to illustrate protecting a transformer based on the ANSI C57 through fault curves. I'm also gonna use this example to illustrate how protective relays operate because we're gonna look at both of these together. So we're gonna protect this transformer based on the ANSI through fault curves and the protection is going to be provided using overcurrent relays.